Warning, the following content contains sounds. It has been shown that some sapiens of the Homo have episodic memory towards some sounds. Therefore, forming a bad reaction to certain sounds. Nevertheless, the sounds we use are only to mock actions and notions, which are, of course, ridiculous. We are not mocking the people who have them. No, no, no. Because you know in time, you may change what you do and change what you think. Having said that, this is a correlation sensation. A show where I talk about your mother's mammalian protuberances. Yes, yes. They come in all sorts of shapes, colors and textures and smells. But of course, we will proceed to something more important. go. Did you know that my butthole is itchy? Yes. You've oh. been talking about all day long. Well, good yeah. sticking corn up there. Yeah, I mean, seriously. The corn syrup is making your asshole cheeks, or your cheeks, your ass cheeks, stick together. Well, I thought that was the whole point of why someone would buy a whole ear of corn. And you have that whole fucking allergy to corn. Wait a second. Episode 91. Ooh. 91. We're getting close. I was talking to this guy, and he's saying he doesn't listen to podcasts unless they reach 100 or more episodes. That's, that's kind of stupid. Some podcasts I know that have been running for years don't reach 100. Because there's a podcast that's at like 20, and it's gone since like 2011, and they do them few and far between. Yeah, that sounds few and far between if you ask me. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that that's would like be That's like two a year. Not that even, be it's annoying. been years, it's been, no. they haven't had any since 2013, I think it's, he's done. Yeah, it sounds yeah, like see, he's that's done. See, what, that's why that guy was saying that. What's the point of listening to somebody who's just going to give up? I know, but each one is in a point of, uh, uh, it's a story, not just like a random one-off, but uh, like actual, like news journalists it's based off kind of sounds like that sunday morning show there's a podcast on the pod belly network which we are a part of by the way yes yeah it's ran by so fucking podcast if you didn't know that it's top secret nobody else knows that except you 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 <laughs> and you and you and you and me yes i guess i know that now yeah yeah i said you me? You. I'm that special? Okay, what, what were you going to say? Oh, there's a podcast called Breakers Podcast, and it's actually just, it's essentially an audible book in episodes. Ah. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, there was a podcast I used to listen to. There was a zombie story they wrote, and it all had episodes that started after the comic of Walking Dead, but before the show. Uh, like, not anything related, but doing with the craze of zombies. Well, it's technically related because it's about zombies. Yes. But do, it was actually they, an audio book, too. Do they do different books? No, no, no. It's a, They made up their own story with voice casts and stuff. And, like, people dying. And they have sound effects and stuff. Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait one second. Okay, it's going again. It's doing that weird thing where the line's not going anywhere. But the sound bar for the waves is expanding. Yeah, I think the next thing that we need to do... Is a new computer. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Because we need one for me to read off of, and then one for Voight to handle the audio one. You son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. Hey! You son of a blue waffle like half an ape. That's really disrespectful. 
that's so disrespectful to talk about my blue waffle every episode. Ooh. Every episode. Okay, sorry. No more. You know what we do for episode 91? What's that? Something special. Man, does you could call it special. Everything you do is special. Ah, uh, yeah, thank you. Especially you. Yes, I, yep, that's what I, that's I, where I was going. You. Yep, yeah, you do. You okay for it? Yeah, I just saw Ozzy walk into the room. I was gonna say, you, you're seeing things, huh? Did you slip something in my drink? Just maybe something. Something. Like well, gummies? No, what, what we gave you for it is the excretions from the adrenal glands of little children. What? Oh, great. Am I Illuminati now? Yes. No, no. You're much better than that. What? Because we're not made up. <laughs> Man, the gangrene from that fake shot that we gave him is spreading to his thumb. Look at that. Oh, shit. Son. Oh, you got I'm going to be a big up. hit with the ladies. I don't know. Uh, you know they might want to hit you. Green thumb. You can hit them with your stick of a thumb. Or they can ride it. I guess that's a new definition for tree hugger. Yeah. More like tree fucker. Yes. Yeah, tree they fucking. like your wood, literally. Have you heard of a lady who has fallen in love with a forest? I have one right now, your mother. How many dildos did she carve out of tree limbs? I don't know. It's like the crazy people who say they fuck a ghost or whatever. That would be interesting. Like, like a whole room filled with dildos, not the fucking a ghost thing. That's not interesting. Yes, seen in the documentary of uh, Scary Movie 2. Really? Scary Movie 2? Documentary. Ah. I gotta check that one out, boy. Yes. Who did it? Stanford? BBC? No, it's uh, Wayne's Brothers. The Wayne's Brothers? Uh-huh. Like Bruce Wayne? No, no, no. Wayne's I didn't brothers. know he had any brothers. They used to be really funny then became talentless. Well, I, now they are. Back I then they were. I think they're still funny. I don't know. I kind of, I kind of, I'm confused at what we're talking about. They're hit or miss, but, uh, most of our new stuff are just kind of... Oh, so some of the things you like and some of the things you don't, right? I like the first Haunted House. Then the second one kind of sucked. Haunted House? Yeah, isn't that what it's called? No? What is it called? Scary Movie. No. No, I don't Their know. Their newest know. one. Scary Movie Documentary or Haunted House Documentary? Let me look this up. Okay, let's talk about something important while your mother does that. Okay. <laughs> She's cheating on you with the Google tits. That's okay. Google, I found out, has the most number of viewers out of any search engine in making her the biggest slut I've ever been with. I was going to go with Floozy, but okay. Okay, I'm sorry. It's called A Haunted House. Oh, yeah, huge difference. A versus Haunted a haunted versus Isn't it a. the joke that they just fucking leave? I don't know. It, it's really funny. How honestly. does a documentary have a joke? I was being a joke because I didn't know the movie wasn't real. That was the joke. And you ruined it. How did that ruin the joke? Because I was seriously interested in learning something about a haunted house or some scary movie. But you just told me it was a joke. Making me feel shitty <laughs> about believing you at all. Well, I thought you would know. Ray Ray was my favorite. He was the gangster who came in. It, it's Keisha's cousin, I think. Was it Keisha's cousin? I don't, I don't know. Something like that. I don't know. Ray Ray was my favorite. I don't know. I, I, I think their best movie was probably... Uh, don't be a mess to society and drink juice in the ghetto or hood. I can't remember exactly the name, but it was a parody of Menace to Society. Huh. Interesting. Do you mean where he put the ketchup on her toes? Oh. 
I don't know. It was a 90s movie. You gotta try that now. So it was before Scary Movie. No, that's that's what it was. Okay. Trust good. me. Yes. Okay, I've dokey. seen that movie a million times. Let, let's go to a topic, okay, for you. Yes. Let's do that, okay? Since we have covered some of the largest names in philosophy in their books on said topic, I figured, what the hell? Why not cover another ape man in the milestone in the evolution of language? Therefore, the evolution of reasoning. Because everyone knows when the people's words start to change, their way of thinking starts to change. Because words are tools on how people reflect upon reality. Once you have a larger number of tools, you may have a more vivid depiction of reality. Less ambiguity, if you will. My one primary source, source one, is that of the archived scanned in English version of the book credited to René Descartes, titled Discourse on Method. I noticed that there was a preface to the book with some explanation of to this and that and blah blah blah, so I skipped ahead to the first chapter, because I don't care for anything but the bold statements this human put out there, even if they are tamed in... Co- you turn off the volume of that thing if you're going to dig around on Sorry, it. Sorry, it was my you... date. We canceled, so no. now I have more time. Oh, you, we canceled. You guys canceled together, huh? Well, no, no. Just, she's uh, tired, so I'm like, I completely understand. Well, Babe, you think she's tired because of what we did? No, you don't even know her. How do you know that we don't know her? Yeah, maybe she could have been a cougar we found. You think we don't know her doesn't mean that we don't know her. Can we just move to another topic? Let's just say her nickname is Little Google. Because she's got little tits? Oh, she got big tits. Oh. Did she send them to you? I'd seen like a cleavage picture, but nothing really provocative yet. John, you know we're just messing around, right? That's a good sign. No, I know. Okay, we're not we're not poking at you at all. No. We love you, son. I, I'm just We're saying. planning on doing something, but and she's like, Hold on, I just don't want to rush into things and I'm like, I completely understand. We don't have to even meet today if you don't want to. Yes. Take things slow. Yeah, especially when you first insert the penis. Yes. Let let her come around to you. Yes. yes. Let her work it in. <laughs> That's not what I meant. But okay, babe. <laughs> no? I mean, yeah, when that time comes. But I think she should be comfortable enough meeting the man first. And you probably should take her somewhere, like, in public. for the. No, first no, that's meeting. where we were planning to go. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because just inviting her over to your house, she's just going to get the idea that you want to stick your dick in her butt. Well, that was the plan, but uh, she wanted to meet and check to see did if the coast sh- was clear. Did you show her your itinerary? Well, no, I told her the plan of this time, and she, she didn't mind meeting late, so. Oh, you told her a plan? You're supposed to keep that secret for it. Well, just podcast, it's here. Oh, okay. Okay. So you didn't tell her where that... You where planned on sticking in her wahoo. Yeah. No, no, I'm just saying we planned, we had maybe fantasized a bit about. Yeah, you fantasized, huh? I started with her being tied up and her wanting Ooh. to be teased. A guy she never met before is talking about tying her up, huh? She said that. Oh, damn, she quick. She was being joking, and I said, hey, I want to meet, and she actually said, yeah, but then she realized, oh, wait, maybe we should wait a second. Ah, okay, so... I don't care for anything but the bold statements this human put out there, even if they are tame when one compares it to many ape mans that live today. You know, there's a lot of explicit statements indicating that he is not trying to contradict the authorities of his day. Showing respect? Yeah, I guess so, or patronage. Before I find myself tumbling down into the subjective interpretations of what is radical and what is normal, because we could go down in the rabbit hole and talk hours on this. We're gonna talk about Rene Descartes. In what better way than to start off quoting the composition from the very beginning, you guys? The very beginning? Of the book. 
Well, let's get started. Yeah. You're the one stopping us. Bah! I am leading you down, and you guys stopping down me. Down what? A rabbit hole? No. Down my page. Oh. Oh. Okay. Uh. Yeah. I can't see your page, baby. You you ready? You're gonna hear it. I I, I am ready. I, I'm waiting. I want to listen to everything and you have to say. If you want, you could use your imagination to visualize the words I will. as I say them. That's what I always do. That's the best part. Quote: Good sense of all things among men, the most equally distributed, for everyone thinks himself so abundantly provided with it that he does even who are the most difficult to satisfy in everything else, do not usually desire a larger measure of this quality than they already possess. End quote. Rene Descartes. Oh, it's beautiful. You think so? No. I think it's bullshit. Yeah, We completely. think, void. It's a little vague. Vague? He basically says everybody has an equal amount of reasoning. Oh, it just depends on how they use it, right? I guess. I think a bunch of bullshit. Everybody's different. Yeah, to me, or what? Some people have absolutely no reasoning in their logic. They think what they think, and they don't give a fuck what anybody else's opinion is. And that's my reason. Because I know it to be true. Yeah. To me, this sounds like Rene Descartes thought that since nobody thinks they need more perception which is exactly what he explicitly stated in his quote, even though I know plenty of people who desire more sense anyways, everyone is equal in reasoning. I know that there are species that appear not to care to acquire more sense. Should I not say that they all have equal amounts of sense? Or do I even believe that they don't have sense at all? Because to me, it appears that other animals do not have sense. I thought you said equal amounts of sex. And I was like, I know for a fact there's a lot of people that do not have the same amount of sex as we do. Oh, no, 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 not Mother, 70 times a day. Mother, how come every single time you hear something, it's always that one thing? Because that's what's always on my mind. Sex, sex, You're a horny, sex. horny toad. Yes, I am. She's so complex with sex. Oh. Didn't you hear what your daddy said? What? My daddy, too. He said we have sex like seven times a day. Seven, yeah. So seven minutes in heaven? Times seven. Yeah, so uh, let me ask you guys here. So since he's basically saying that the amount of reasoning is not different among men because they don't even desire any more reasoning, right? So... If animals appear to not want any more reasoning, what's going to stop me from thinking that other animals don't have the same amount of reasoning as humans do? Well, if we look at the actual brain, don't we have a different reasoning center that's bigger? Some of animals... Like dolphins. Brain function is just instinct. So there's no reasoning with that at all. Well... Yeah, it would depends on what one defines as reasoning in the first place. Maybe your reasoning is, this is what I feel, so therefore this is what I do. That doesn't seem like reasoning to you? I guess so, in a sense. Or maybe but reflection? The way we reason, I would assume, would be a little different. Well, yeah, would different. Well, humans have a different brain structure than other animals. Chimpanzees actually reason. They have their own reasoning center. In dolphins, their reasoning center ratio-wise is much larger than humans. What is that smile for? I just had to give you a big I love it. Don't you love our smile, Void? Doesn't it just make you feel bright and happy? I feel like I could uh, uh, get seven years of bad luck if I, uh, luck if I held up a mirror. Yes, it probably would break. From its beauty. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's how it works. Shortly after Descartes indicates that although we will disagree, the disagreement is not due to one person holding more sense than another human being. My son just called me ugly. I said your teeth, Jesus. But because... <laughs> okay, 
All right, we're gonna have an episode of Mari today. Yeah. Okay, how does that make you feel? Ugly. Ugly, because of his perception? Yes. Well, he's your son. He should think his mommy's beautiful. Yeah? Yeah. Wasn't the whole point to get him away from your teeth? Yes. Keep speaking, you're making me feel better. Wouldn't you rather him think you to be ugly? Yeah, I want him to stop fucking me too. Yeah, it's kind of That's not true. What the hell are we talking about? Oh, boy. Last week you were over here giving it to me from behind. Don't pretend like, is that why you don't want to look at my face anymore? I said put on the bag. But I just thought you liked me wearing the bag on my head. This is not making me feel better at all, son. If it makes you feel any better, honey, I don't tell you to put on my bag. And I love looking at you while we do the do. Yeah. And my face, too. And the last time I remember boning your son, I put bag on his head. Well, screw you two. What? That's it. No more for you, son. You're cut off for good. I thought you liked bags on head, to be honest, because you do that to your mom. So I figured that was a thing you like. Void? Yes. What are you doing? Nothing. I was turning off. Get your hand out of the pants. So what? It turns you on when I tell you you can't have a piece anymore? You gotta put your hand in your pants? You sick son of a bitch! And he likes, he likes doing the things that are no-no, huh? I guess so, huh? Like breaking the rules. Void, are just, you a... Just like your father. Are you a bad boy, Void? Are you naughty, naughty, naughty? He's just like his father. I was afraid of this. I got I... it from you! So, let's go on to why Descartes didn't think that just because we degree, disagree doesn't mean that one of us has more sense than the other. Because, quote... That we conduct our thoughts along different ways and do not fix our attention on the same objects. For to possess a rigorous mind is not enough. The primary requisite is rightly to apply it. The greatest minds, as they were capable of the highest excellence, are open likewise to the greatest aberrations. And those who travel slowly may yet make for greater progress, provided that they keep always to the straight road and those who, while they run, forsake it. End quote. I think what he might be saying there is the ability to is useless without trying to do it with the ability you have, right? Well, that's one part. Yes. Another one is that we focus on different things. Yes. Because our life experiences dictate what we find important. So everybody's going to have different opinions because other people are going to be saved by different aspects that they think are valuable. Like not wearing a bag on my head? Yeah. Or like you some thinking people. that I'm beautiful even though he thinks my teeth are ugly? Yeah, I find you beautiful. I think your teeth are beautiful too. Oh, you're so sweet, he honey just, buns. He just doesn't like it because he has teeth like you and he used to get made fun of in high school. That makes sense. So I was more focused on this quote for the fact that it was talking about straight road. And uh, you do realize that even though if one travels in circles around the planet in a quote-unquote straight line, there is always a curvature that the person is following when going around the earth. Void, you're playing footsie with me. Oh, I thought that was actually just a shoe. You You like playing footsie with me, Void? No, no, I was just stretching. Yeah? Did you think that those were my feet all the way over there? No. I was literally just stretching. Yeah. Straight anything is an abstract concept that proves non-existent in reality. Atoms, even in depictions with the electron microscopes, are void of straight anything. They appear as spheres. So... As far as aberrations on his own quote, how can one believe a thought they disagree with, no matter how different from their own to be wrong? 
If everyone has the same amount of good sense, how can anyone have an aberration? He was talking about people have great aberrations. Even the greatest mind have great aberrations here. Just because people have different opinions doesn't mean one is more sensible than the other. It just means we have a different opinion because we look at things differently. So what's to say what is an aberration and what's not? That's, that's pretty deep. Well, I'm, I'm trying to read this thing and question it. Yeah, no, it makes you think, though. So. Yeah, furthermore... When one reads the next paragraph, we get to a point of Rene describing differences of his own imagination, clearness, and distinction, memory capabilities, along with pompitude of thought, readiness to have, which I believe to be episodic memory, as things that make a person's mind greater. So these are three attributes, right? We have readiness of mind or thought, memory capabilities, and imagination, clearness, and distinction. It's the three things that make someone's mind better. Actually, quote-unquote, perfection of mind. And Descartes talks about how he has wanted these before, which contradicts his very first opening statement about how no people desire better reasoning or sense. So, if De Descartes actually admits that the level of these three are different among individuals, he is implying, in fact, that people have different levels of sense. Are you sure people have different levels? Oh, I'm positive. Makes sense to me. Like, people have other senses, too. Oh, yeah, different More levels. Senses. And you can't really compare those, because they're all of their own type of importance, right? Yes. Based upon even... Your own sense of home, you smell. What smells bad, what smells good. And yeah, some people like the smell of farts. Yes. That's hot. Yeah, I know. Or uh, say if you get drunk off of rumple mitts or vodka and you get bad hangover, when you smell it again, it will puke. And it is a memory from that happening, creating a physical feeling. You know what? That emotional memory of, you know puking based off drinking too much of a certain type of alcohol is actually really hard to get rid of. It's, it's actually the same thing with many foods. If you get food poisoning from any food that you may have loved beforehand, you may not ever want to touch it again. Yes. That's I got, happened to me. The ones I was eating, chips, habanero flavored, and they're sweet. They made me almost puke, and now I can't. I can have habaneros, but I can't have those chips anymore. Oh, I bet. I, I don't like spicy sweets anyways. The first time I ever projectile puked was after eating hot link hot dogs. Just like hot, spicy, saucy hot dogs. How old were you? I was like 14. Jesus. She I'm, was deep throating them too, by the way, Void. Great. It was practice. That's why they project out so well. Yeah, and that shit flew across the room probably two feet, Was man. it cooked properly or was it undercooked? I have no clue. I was 14. I didn't give a shit. That reminds me of the time where I ran over a jug of milk in the street during the summertime. And I came out after driving a few blocks. And I had just one whiff. I projectile puked. It looked like a snake came out of my mouth. I actually threw up on Saturday. Oh. I was hungover because I drank a whole bottle of wine like a dumbass, and I don't drink anymore. Oh, so you're as lightweight. Well, yeah, and I'm on my period, so that makes it worse. If you know anything about women drinking on their period, it's not a good idea. <coughs> don't do it, especially when you're in your 30s. One thing I would agree with, though, on the previous quote that I used, is that people do change their matter of perspective or what have you on reasoning, whether or not their constitution changed based on their environmental impacts, right? Oh, that's 100%. People change. I've changed. I'm not the yeah. same person I used to be. Yeah, you're not the same child molesting woman that you used to be. Absolutely not. But you know what we did for you? What? I baptized her in the great Big Bang goo. Oh. Oh, great, powerful Big Bang. Orgy of the universe. Giving birth 
to every part of your universe. Is that when I went through all those really goofy tubes? That was when we were at the water park, honey. Yes, this is not the urinal. Oh, I never experienced that before. I just figured maybe that's what you were talking about. Well, I mean, your reasoning, according to Descartes, could not possibly be less than mine. So perhaps maybe that played a role with the great Big Bang baptism. Even though it's not part of it at all. So so when did you do this to me? Because I don't remember. It was before we got married. Oh, you wanted to cleanse me, huh? Well, I wanted to give you something else to believe in. Gotcha. Okay. Because I have read several places that humans commonly are inclined to have some sort of dogma. So if I tried to get you to believe in something more rational than a big spaghetti monster in the sky slathering people with his Alfredo sauce, I could, you know, get you to believe in something uh, that we can prove, and that is the orgy of the universe. Well, I mean, the universe is always fucking me, so something I definitely can believe in. Yeah, definitely. But on the other hand, I do think a person's constitute actually does change, does change for unforeseen moments to be out of one's control such as brain damage or some other forces that affect the brain, including dietary intake. I mean, different precursors to many of the neurotransmitters are inside of food. Even CO2 is considered a neurotransmitter, according to one book I've listened to. I have brain damage. Yeah, I am certain of that one. You should, you should Especially go. all the times with the bag over your head. Yeah, so, you know, I can't breathe for, like, minutes at a time. Thanks, Void. Yeah, the first time I didn't put holes in the bag. And it was a plastic one. That was, like, the first few hundred times. I told you to read the choking hazard on there before you tried that. I thought that was for children. You are her child. Oh, that's what it meant. Yes, exactly. So, regardless of what was known about the brain growth throughout a person's life, it is clear that heads do grow in a person's lifetime. I have no doubt that humans' heads have grown throughout history. And this is well known by skull binding from the ancients. Several cultures across the globe, including Mongolians and Egyptians, and even some of the Americas, they had skull binding, showing that the development of the mind inside of the cranium occurs throughout life, especially in the years when the actual head visibly grows. Is this an actual thing, skull binding? Yes. I gotta this is look why, this up. This is why the Romans had described the Mongolians as horrible-looking creatures, unhuman, subhuman, because their heads were shaped funny. Jesus well, that was- Christ! Yeah, they actually do that to reshape children's heads if the parent neglects the child. I know they do that now because, you know... It's an ancient art. Boyd was left on his back way too much as an infant. That's why it looks so flat in the back. Yeah, she had to use those helmets. I actually never had one of those helmets. Your mom has pictures, Boyd. Why Maybe she- if her pussy didn't squeeze so hard on my head. Why would you want to do this to your child? For regal purposes. Cultural purposes. Humans have lots of reasons or justifications for what they do. Excuses. It looks like they're retarded. They literally look like they have Down syndrome. Well, until maybe they're grown up, but as a child, Jesus Christ. That shuts back their eyes. Look at that. It opens them wide up. The fuck is that shit? No offense, but it looks weird, man. Don't be insensitive to other cultures. It's they can't possibly be doing something completely fucked up. Why does it look like a man is breastfeeding his baby? Baby's confused. Is that a man or is that the mom with a big old gut? Is she pregnant again? 
Jesus Christ. That really does fuck up your head, doesn't it? Yeah. I literally think it's just for comfort. I think that is the father. Oh, uh, hey. Hey, Foy, can you send me a picture of that? No. Maybe two people? Is that, like, when? Oh, my God. Does this mess with their brain function? Do you know if that messes with the brain function? It would have to affect the shape of their brain. So, all nuance set aside, I have yet to see a well-thought-out formulation to conclude how one type of mental faculty to be of more or less significance, like I said earlier, since they contribute to different areas of brain function, while multiple areas are used for understanding certain aspects of reality, such as the taste of an apple or the view of an apple, the tactile functions of your mouth while chewing the apple, or the entire being of your brain being impacted from the dietary intake from said apple. Though I do not think them to be of equal importance, I do not think them to be of different levels of importance, but of their own specified area of importance, much like how one would require some bias applied to superior or inferior sports. For instance, I know that foot football is globally more popular and impacts a greater number of people globally than North American football, although directly one impact from a terrible game of American football may impact a whole chain that's unseen. Like, for instance, a terrible choice made by someone who's unhappy with their decision to bet on a high-priority football game may make a decision that negatively impacts their underlings as they manage them through maybe, I don't know, maybe benefits when applying for benefits as their system as a whole which would take a lot more uh, totalitarian overview and technological advances to actually observe all the fluctuations and changes, not only in the person's body and brain, but also in the whole impact of their life afterwards, which would take a supercomputer no human is capable of doing so far. You guys still playing pussy? On accident. I did that on purpose. You're weird, though. Oh, you call me a weirdo. Pot kettle, pot kettle. Exactly. I got so excited when I realized what that meant, Void. Pot kettle, what? Pot doesn't say anything. I can't call anything anything. But then I realized it was, how do you say, sexy figure of speech wiggling its butt in front of my face. Oh, oh, yes. How you like them apples? Nice and ripe. Exactly. So, back to the book uh, screen here. Descartes expresses how he sees himself in humble light, where he, even he had worshipped all the thought that was taught in education until he completed such. Because all areas of study had been areas that were fallible when it came to comprehending the subjects of physics or philosophy, anatomy, even math during his time. I mean, Descartes is credited for inventing analytical geometry. Hopefully that sets a tone for the listeners here and you guys, if you guys haven't even thought about this, how far back they were in terms of understanding reality. Sure. Further into the pages, there are descriptions of showing how Descartes learned several languages so he could understand what was written from the ancients, giving him an understanding of the time that documents were written in in the understanding of the author's own cultural beliefs, along with morals, and other customs, showing that the person's limited to their own country's perception of what's right and wrong, will commonly dismiss the customs of other cultures to be irrational, ridiculous, and so forth. He also took note that enough time, enough time spent away from his native region will make themselves foreign to the land they once felt you know, as home. Which is said to be similar to that of those who spend their time reading ancient books only. Which was another thing he explained as to why he wrote it in his quote-unquote barbarous tongue, which was French, 
rather than that of Latin, because those who spend their time only wanting to read Latin books will not take kindly to ideas different from that of Aristotle and so forth, while those who can speak French will appear to a larger and more common folk, which he had hoped would alter the minds of future generations, or at least what I feel he had hoped. You sure feel a lot. Yes. The mind is a complex thing. Well, humans feel a lot. A lot of them just don't like to admit it. So you can feel what that meat suit is feeling? Yeah. You have feelings? Of course. I didn't know you had feelings. Yeah, it's part of the whole simulation. You have to be a part of what you're experiencing. I just thought you were pretending to have feelings. How do you think we learn about the new experiences and society and the brain? I don't know. I'm not you, so I was just asking. Even then, these are generalizations based on culture. Everybody knows that within a culture, they have disagreements. Generalizations based on books written by people who lived in cultures they have no actual connection to cannot possibly understand the nuance of that culture. Only mere echoes of individuals who have certain perceptions on that culture are displayed. Descartes even noted that Functional pasts are commonly written, or at least represented. This is true. I have read Gian Battista de la Porta, Aristotle, and Plato's writings. Taking any of these at face value will have someone ignorant, ignoring the contradicting parts of reality that we currently experience. So only reading books that others have written will definitely hinder your own understanding. Although I do know this to be true, I also know that there is a truth to be learned from the wrong, if you know what I mean. Because you get to see the importance of someone's pompous nature and how if someone has a certain belief and they hold to it and dismiss all others and administer generalizations, they're cutting not only themselves off but the readers as well. That sounds kind of like you, babe. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. No. You can be pretty pompous. Never. I don't know. Not I, the great and almighty Gork. I am right there. You just you just showed them what I was talking about. What? I can't. I'm better than humans. Yes, that is pompous. Pah! A fact is not pompiety. Okay. You can think whatever you want to, but I think you might be wrong here. Which species traveled half across this Milky Way galaxy they call and came to this planet? I don't think you're the only species. Oh, no, we definitely are not. That can travel but that But we far. were the first, besides humans. Just because you're the first doesn't mean you're the smartest. Whatever. That's... You being arrogant. Well, who was so far in advance that we came here way before the others? We. How long have they been here? We've been here ever since we saw humans in the trees hopping all around. Like goddamn apes they are. Is Throwing that, feces. Is that why you call them apes? Or, I'm sorry, us? Humans are apes, goddammit, even yeah, the humans admit that. I understand that. that, but, I mean, we've evolved. You still are apes. So you just look at me like an ape? I mean, you're, you have less hair. Kind of. It's another bush joke. Well, I was talking about my whole body. It's got, I got hair all over my body. Are you sure that was a bush joke, Void? I don't know. We're not in Australia. Speaking of which, where's Tom Nye? quit pissing on the table. Where is Tom Nye, by the way? I, I'll go get him, because I need to get something anyways. Yeah? Yeah. I know where he's hiding. He's hiding in that secret closet. I showed him where it was, and I told him, you didn't know where it was. And now he thinks that you can't find him? Oh, you mean the place where Void hid my fucking panda bear? Yes. Corpse? Yeah. 
Fuzzy she, wuzzy. She's in there with that stinky meat. Well, it's, it's mostly rotted now and all eaten by lots of fucking insects. But I'll be right back. Yeah. You go do that. Okay, Lloyd. Yes. Let's continue. Yes. Renee went on to describe math being beneficial for industrial use, while morals from humans who fancy themselves to be well-versed in what is right or wrong had foundations built on mud and sand. Which, uh, that's a pretty good one to me. Although I think Plato was onto something when he started off his conversation between Socrates and some of the other apes in a book called The Republic, when they go into the very controversial nature of humans discussing the concept of justice. I do see that Plato had an idea of what he thought of justice to be, based on people's inherent capabilities, where the whole society is founded upon a lie. I honestly didn't complete the reading called The Republic, because it got to a point of ridiculousness, and I was not going to play a part in that rabbit hole. Even if it was all done to show how society in general is held together by a lie, such as land of the free, home of the brave. I brought you a gift. Oh, is it time night? Yes. Right here. Right, right here. Oh, I can't see right now. Why not, Tom? I don't know what it was you put inside that closet spray me right in the eyes. I think you got pink eye. Right, my eyes do look kind of pink, huh? But you're not from shit. I know, but the rock and corpse can smell like shit. Right, is it? It smells a little more gross than shit. It's definitely some shit in there. Right, it, it, I suppose so, since it was an animal in there, rotting away. Oh, did you see all the bones? I started making a little instrument out of them. Did you start playing with the with the rib cage? Yeah, you know one of those old zigzaggy instruments that used to be used. Xylophone. Not one of those. Harp. No, it was a it was a percussion instrument. You know, I think they used to use fish ribs, but it's in the shape of a fish, and it has ribs on the side. They take a stick. They rub it across the bumps, you know, kind of like the Americans when they uh, came up with their hillbilly music, you know, oh, like the, the wash, washboard. Washboard, right? Gotcha. I I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about, except for the washboard. I I know what that is, but the other thing, I have no fucking clue. I think they usually paint in red and green on the front. That must be the something from your fish. country. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely not. The from Latin America. Oh, you're Peruvian. calling me love again. Yeah, yeah. Do you Boy's got me? right. You forgive me for leaving you in that hole in the ground. Well, you were protecting me from Gork. What? Protection? You don't need Why did you tell him that? That's not true, sweetie. That's not true. I don't believe anything she says. She just you, wants me I, in bed. No. That, yes, yes, I do want you in bed, babe. But right, see right there. That's not all of it. He's making that up. I was just going to leave him there, and that holds a giant rock. And then, okay, I'm just going to stop. You guys, you guys. I, c I can speak for myself it. because I am the most fearful of gawk I'm out of gonna all of you. I'm just going to put you in the fucking hole again. That's it. Right, yeah. I'd rather be put inside a hole in the desert with scorpions riding about my head having intercourse than to have Gork try to knock me out with any implement he can grab on while Void is pretending like nothing is going on right now, being stuck to his phone. That, sh that sounds like a good time. Sorry, I was looking up that instrument. Don't Mo be sorry. What's it called? Marimba. No, that's a mallet instrument. You would know all about the mallets. Guerrero. G 
G-U-R-I-O. No, G-U-I-R-O. Gyro? Gyro. Gyro, yeah. Something like that. I don't know. I'm very shitty at pronunciation because my teeth get in the way of a lot of my words. Your They're tits? My teeth. Oh. Here you go again, you guys. Making fun of the way I speak. It's all the time talking about my blue waffle and my fucking teeth. I you... said tits. Yes. I know, but you're making fun of the words I'm saying. No, I thought you I thought I heard tits. Oh. Well, it's just my teeth. Oh. They're they're only about a half an inch away from my bottom teeth. Well anyways. So when people believe wholeheartedly in lies that they read in books like Descartes was talking about, we have an example. More specifically, the two maxims that are popular today that I'm sure you two can remember would be land of the free, right? Yes. Meanwhile, they'll say nothing in life is free. Right, right. Yeah, we make fun of that over there. By the nature of definition, there's two, two statements in people's head are contradicting right now. You know, it's, it's like... It's like believing that the sky is blue, meanwhile believing that the sky is purple. Yeah, but you well, guys... Well, if you're colorblind, it could be purple. You guys think you're free over there, and you're not fucking free. All you what about is God free Save the Queen? Care. That's about it. I personally don't care about politics. You guys' laws are just as shitty. It's you're just pretty bon- I mean, you guys just touch people's swords, and that's a way of voting. They didn't vote for them. All they got was a sword out of a watery lake, and now they're a king. Which century are you referring to? King Arthur, that's whose rules. Oh, there. Void, we're, we're totally past that. Oh. Long time ago, there was King Arthur. But not anymore. Right, King Arthur. Who's the king now? George? Probably King Wallace. Right, I told you I don't care about politics. You gotta be King Wazoo for all I care. King Koala Wallaby. Koala Wallaby. Anywho. Let's let's get back to the book, you guys. Okay. Rene went into a metaphysical dip that he had to be more than a man in order to understand the heavens. Which would explain why he didn't bother with explaining much about that at all. He would leave that up to someone else to think about. He would then give rise to the surface of reality with philosophy. No matter how much time I spend putting into words what René Descartes is credited for writing, I don't think I would do any better, maybe equal to uh, this quote here. Of philosophy, I will say nothing except when I saw that it had been cultivated for many ages by the most distinguished man, and that yet there is not a single matter within its sphere which is not still in dispute in nothing, therefore, which is above doubt. I do not presume to anticipate that my success will be greater than that of others. End quote, René Descartes. Then, when it comes to science, he didn't dare to declare to be most knowledgeable than any other humans who wrote about this subject and only knew not to be fooled by quote-unquote charlatans of alchemy, astrology, or magicians, for nobody cannot truly know that which they are ignorant of. Following this education, following his education, he sought only to seek that of knowledge he had from his own experiences that he gathered from studying the book of the world, which we talked about in the last episode. By the quote-unquote book of the world, he meant Europe, Northern and Southern Europe. He forgot the much older cultures of Asia, such as China or Mongolia or India, so forth like Japan, or of the countries that were pillaged by Europeans and raped, where the history was buried or burnt down to the ground. And many of those who spoke the language were whipped into place or killed off. So, even if someone found those writings at all, the language would be something alien. What René Descartes sought 
was to spend time conferring with people of many social statuses with multiple cultures. He did this explicitly out of desire to learn more about the impacts of people's perceptions based on their experiences. He also did this when he was fairly young, in his 20s. He claimed that one could learn more from spending time with others and their thoughts on their life's experiences and how they survive or thrive, which held more consequences in their own actions than those who dwell within towers and reading other philosophers' books for speculating on life without any real consequences, even though there is consequences of censure and imprisonment if you write something that the leaders do not want you to say. So although René did allude to philosophers sitting in towers, reading books, not having consequences, this notion appears to me contradictory towards the obvious consequences that he even describes in this very book I read. When it comes to making statements that leaders may find controversial, René also speaks as if he had nothing to say that would be controversial, at least to his leaders. Although, if anyone makes a statement of any kind, especially in the area of philosophy, whether it be metaphysics or of real material beings, there's bound to be people who would disagree with it and bound to be people who would find it controversial. What's this book called? Discourse on Method. Just wondering if you remembered. I don't know why you're wondering that. A uh, lot's going through your brain. Right, right. Why, why would he not remember that? Gork, you've been inhaling too many thoughts. Who told you? Who do you think? Your motherfucking bitch! Excuse me? Right, you did kind of like leave that inside of the podcast for everybody to listen to. Right now, that woman over there you say you love is staring at, like, at you like she's about ready to do something worse than leave you in the desert in a hole. Don't underestimate me. Void, are you okay? It looks like you're grabbing your chest. I'm okay. I'm stretching. Okay. Don't underestimate me. I'm, uh, who's underestimating you? I think you are. Never. Speaking to me like that. Roy, uh, go. you should probably figure out a way to calm yourself down before you speak. Because... You may end up saying something that leads to the end of you. Catch more drip. Ah, oh, you end up me. I'll show you end up you. You kept me this long. You must mock me alive. You probably ain't going to do nothing to me. Ah, oh, you son of a... You go back in your heart. Roy, uh, no. Not going in me hole. Go in your hole. You should hey. go back in the little hiding spot. He doesn't know about that one. He does now. That's where his pet was, his endangered species, by the way. Pet panda bear that Void killed by shoving too much cocaine up its ass. Now go in the other one that I showed you. He doesn't know about that one. That's where I hide. So, speaking of full circle, the first part is concluded with a full circle. Back to the differences in opinion of common apes is not much different than the disagreements held between many philosophers, concluding that he indicated he made himself an object of study, which I feel to be very useful. When one observes himself, life changes and mental alterations, one can view that they are not a static figure that can be logically described with an abstract generalization, like a person is blank person smart, a person dumb, a person, you know, it's funny. People are very fluid. They're made with fluid, mostly. Yes. Like 70% water? Right. Actually, it's 50. It's always changing in the books. I guess or water so. underneath the bridge. Always getting stuff I wrong. I think that pussy is uh, fucking with that litter. I think I need to go clean it up. Okay. Back to topic. Yeah, that's a good idea, Varth. So, the changing nature of René's life would include ditching the country he felt he belonged to, which was Francia, and that of writing books. He preferred to write essays. Where's Francia? France. Francia is France? Yeah. 
That's crazy. Yeah. It doesn't even sound the same. F R A N. They all start with the Fran. No. Frankia. I don't France. think so. You're wrong. Void. Oh, the fact is that uh, short uh, short nickname for the French were the Franks. Because they come from Frankia. I don't believe you. Everything you say to me is a lie. No, no, no. What are one you of, talking about? No, 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 no. One of us is telling the truth, and one of us is lying, but we can't tell you which one. Oh, how about She's this? She's always lying to me. When? Every day. What are you talking about? Just because your son doesn't love the way your teeth look does not mean I'm lying about wait, wait, your teeth. I love the way her tits look. What are you talking about? Teeth. Oh. You know, the things that I love rubbing on my belly. And she goes down and puts my balls in the mouth, gives them a little nibble, and squeezes on my mouth. Yes. Oh, gosh, now she's chewing on the table. My little nickname. Her beaver's so hungry. My nickname for her is my little piranha. <laughs> Sometimes she bites too hard, though. You like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stay here, you guys. Get back in your hole. We'll get back in your hole, Void. You can get in his hole. No, 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 no. From what you described in all those baby pictures, he looks like he has quite a big one. We're going in some weird territory, can we? Please stop while we're ahead. I've, I can become your little mud dog before. So when, uh, the no, one on his face is really huh? big. Oh, yeah, he's a mouth whore. Vaku. Cool. He fit two dicks at once. What the fuck? You're making shit up. My scrap on your boy's cock. I mean, get I my picture. Go cock. Last New Year's, huh, Void? No. Oh, will show you here. Stop it, please. Pterodactyl style Void. Please get back Remember? to the topic. Remember? We were having fun with well, Purple. Said parents were embarrassing. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, you're very sweetie. Well, Aww. duh, when I have this raging heart on, please stop it. Wait, didn't we say we're going back to topic? You're right. The Can... skirt us. Yes, yes, you have a skirt on. No. She's pitching a tent in that skirt. I'm joining the military and that attention. I know, a kilt, I know. So, continuing in the downward spiral that so many writers employ... Renee's literally went back into why he threw away the old philosophical notions. Even though the concept of an incorporeal soul, which is a soul with no material being, is actually an old philosophical notion, one that Aristotle and Plato dismissed. He used an analogy of buildings being built based off one architect rather than multiple being more elegant and spacious even though a fine house with lots of room is quite possible with multiple architects or minds at work together. He then expanded this concept to that with old towns, which became vast cities, much like Paris was, where it was a poorly thought out plan that occurred based off of chance rather than a big, perfect plan, kind of like God's plan, kind of bullshit. For the older structures were to house the flow of a smaller population along with the streets and would use different eras of building techniques when the city got built outward. This was all said to be brought out during moments of seclusion in Germany when it wasn't appealing for him to go out during a winter time where he spent it all to his own thoughts where he could go, you know, confirm his own bias <laughs> in the house by himself. So he just like, Thought his own thoughts, and that was it. That's what he wrote in the book, saying that even though everybody's thoughts are brought out by influences, which include his previous reading of multiple books, which, which would explain why he tried to say the soul, whatever that is, is incorporeal. I'd like to say the analogy of the street and building disorganization being that of chance when someone has several eras of construction, the thoughts of people's minds would be morphed into application to the concept of barbarous peoples 
with their barbarous tongues, with laws based off previous pains from cultural experiences versus that of well-thought-out legislature. I think this would be another generalization predicated on the bias that planning and thinking about something would be superior than just going with the flow. Gonna wait till the sirens go. This reminds me of the beginning part of 2020 when everybody was freaking out. Sirens were going off all the time. Remember that? Especially during the, the protesting. Do you, do you like... I wasn't here for the protesting. Lucky duck. I was in Florida. Oh, that probably would have been funky. They shut down a whole freeway. By they, you mean Antifa. Uh, whoever the protesters were. I'm just joking, human. And they also broke into a jewelry shop and robbed a jewelry shop. Well, I mean, they Black made... Lives Matter. Give me the jewels, bitch. They, it was probably some white people. Oh, definitely. <laughs> trying to be social justice warriors. Whenever you have... A large situation that's not organized by a central location. And even if it is organized by one group, there's always going to be people who take advantage of chaotic scenarios like protesters. I don't know why people thought it was some divine plan by some evil conspirators in a laboratory saying, yes, yes, we're going to fuck it all up. All of the people in their protests are going to cause damage. Because if everybody who was protesting was doing damage, you would have way more problems. Way more thefts, burnt buildings, explosions and such. Makes sense. Yeah, I saw those video footage of all those people in the streets. You know what would happen if everybody there was doing something bad? It would have been terrible. Right. During the protests, weren't we not allowed to go outside after 10 o'clock? I don't know. I, I never what, really went out anyways. That's what I remember when we when I got back from my trip. They were like, oh, you can't go out unless you have a destination at t after 10 o'clock. And I was like, I'll do whatever the fuck I want. As a matter of you, as a matter of fact, that actually occurred in Texas without the riots before the riots happened during COVID. Yeah, well, it's, it's Texas, so. Well, I mean, there's still COVID. I guess. Yeah. So back to the topic at hand here. With Void on his phone, as usual. Six hours later. Sorry. This, this whole thinking about planning is better than uh, going with the flow. All seems to stem from the idea that the mind only has one attribute, which is thought. The power of thought is expressed in this book as some sort of gift bestowed upon only humans, given by the perfection of God. This is why humans are capable of making abstract geometric shapes that don't naturally occur in reality, seemingly to come from Rene's writing. Although, I beg to differ when it comes to that, because if one looks at, um, I don't know, Electron microscope at an atom, like I said before. A spherical shape in nature, the atom is. Or someone looks at a celestial object out in outer space. You have uh, spherical shapes everywhere. Just the outline of looking at it from a two-dimensional point of view, you have a circle. To say that these don't really exist is kind of dull, or kind of neglecting that fact. An example of the law concept working better well thought out, quote unquote, legislature would have been Sparta, for their laws were seen by Rene to have been, quote, strange and even opposed to good morals, end quote. I disagree wholeheartedly and also let down, for even Rene had the pleasure of being exposed to the alterations of what people thought to be right or wrong. Just in that example, we used to show people were changing their opinions philosophically. That the church did not like. Well, shame on them. You even know that uh, women were treated as 
I don't know, property. That was seen to be good back during Rene's day. But, as everybody knows, 20th and 21st century, that was a no-no. Some people still think their women are is, is their property. To no. this day. Only in the bedroom. Uh, I don't... I don't think that's true. Um, I think she still has a say in the bedroom. Nope. Well, just because I don't say no doesn't mean the other women won't say no. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, how many other women have you been with? And they said yes to everything. Well... You're the only woman I've ever been with. You're special. I think that's a lie. I've been with men, just not women. You learn something new every day. I guess so. I I didn't know you were never with another woman. Nope, you're the first snatch I've ever had. Oh, that's that's pretty hot. (laughs) Yeah. I'm glad you're not gay for me. I am very joyous. Well, yes. Carefree. But I mean, I'm gay. Glad that literally, you're, with Flancy. Me, you're not gay. If you want, I can have a sex change, and then I can say I'm gay for you. No, that's okay. I, I like. You sure you don't want another pair of noggins rubbing up against yours? I mean, if you want to do that. Some noggly gooks. Yeah. Yeah. You can give them to me. And some Gonzagas. <laughs> Yeah, I love it when your mom does that for you. Oh, funny. Nothing's funny about that. That sure turned you on. Where's your tent? I think it just went down. Sorry, I'm depressed. Oh, there's a wet spot. He already came. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And went. So, Rene went on to bash his sciences that don't include demonstrations. Even though he didn't utilize anything other than circular thought of how their mind exists without matter, and this in itself is supposed to explain God's existence. This is completely without demonstration. (laughs) You know, although the quote that is famous, credited to Rene, is I think, therefore I am, is a common trope, and he explains in his book that the person can only be assured that their experience proves their existence. A person's experience isn't without all the other aspects of reality in it. Everything that a person experiences, even if made up in one's own mind, should logically deduce with this line of thinking that he uses that everything in your existence is thinking. Because nothing is real except your experience. Your experience is made up of what you have. And I think, therefore, I am. Is that how it goes? Nothing could possibly be unless of a thought. I think, therefore, I am. I think everything is something. Yes, what about this table? This table don't think. Although, one could say consciousness is corporeal. This table has thought. It has lots of memories and lots of Just because you fuck on a daily doesn't mean it remembers it. It does. There's stains. You ever heard stains on wood? That's oh, a memory. There's lots quite of literally, stains on this wood. Quite literally. Uh, there's data that it's transferred, and it's on it. It's part of the pores. Well, it's, um, it's, it's transfer of energy. Yeah, which is literally is what the brain does. That's what thought is, the transference of energy. Everything, quite literally, is transferring energy to you, making it part of thought. It's transmitting some sort of data, whether it be... Something of a black cap on a bottle of water. It's sending you the signals from the light rays. It's communicating its property of absorbing all those colors of the spectrums. And emitting what appears to be black. By the human experience. So, the quote, I think therefore I am, was more intended to people being assured that they exist... That is the only thing that meant a person was sure that they existed. If someone is interested in reading the actual book, the source of the archive document is Source 1. Feel free to read it. It's free for all. There is also an audible book 
that you can listen to, actually multiple, of this book. Let's get down to something really interesting, though. Why we're even talking about Rene Descartes. Okay. Do you remember? Not exactly. Fill me in. How about you, honey? Do you think I remember anything? You remember my name. Yes, but that's about it. The rest gets pounded out every night, so. The pineal gland. The third eye. Now, the pineal gland is known medically for its production of melatonin. The third eye. Receiving signals from light stimulus. And the light intensity alters whether or not the pineal gland produces melatonin. As a matter of fact, the more light intensity... Well, I have to read up on this, but I'm pretty sure that more light intensity stimulates more inhibitory signals being sent to the pineal gland, which inhibits its production of melatonin. Some say something about the other chemical produced uh, being DMT. I was just going to ask about that. But there's a lot of controversy in this area, and I'd rather not touch that with uh, Void's 10-foot pole. Thank you. Because every source that I read that people would deem as reliable always goes into this whole narrative that this is some mumbo-jumbo created by some whack job in the 60s. So, or let, 50s. let me get this straight. The big 10-foot pole that Void pushes things away from him with. You don't want to use that? No, I need a 20-foot one. What's wrong with this 10-foot pole? Let me tell you. If anybody talks about science and then says something that science does not believe or the people in science don't believe... They go, you're dumb, you're a pseudoscientist, you're fake, and we're going to spread it all over and done with you. It's no different than any social issue. So the scientists are going to, like, discredit you? Why not? Or at least writers. A lot of writers don't even have backgrounds in science. But they just regurgitate what they read or what they're told. It just depends on the writer, though. Some of them do. Now, the pineal gland was described in the eighth book of the collection called On the Usefulness of the Parts of the Body, credited to Galen. And other humans have also described it, too. The shape and size are said to give birth to the rationalization of the name for the pineal gland, which in Latin is glandula pinealis. And many would speculate the pineal gland to regulate the flow of psychic pneuma through the ventricles during Galen's time, although Galen disputed this concept. The reason why the Latin name glandula pinealis was given was because the shape and size resembles pine nuts. Sounds just like Galen. Yeah? To just excuse things for no reason. Yeah? Yeah, it sounds like him. Yeah, sometimes. Oh, some of what he wrote was pretty insightful. But uh, anyways, there is a whole bunch of historical moments where people describe the pineal gland of great importance because it's centrally, lo centrally located in the brain. Actually, in the center part of the sphenoid bone, there is a saddle for it, which we have alluded to in an episode covering... <coughs> Excuse me. In an episode covering the sphenoid bone. Remember that, Void? Yes. Since I read that other people had speculated the importance of the pineal gland, I find it interesting that the pineal gland is described as the seat of the mind, or soul, if you will, if you believe Rene Descartes' interpretation. Because Rene was all about discarding all previously said speculatives. My second source, Stanford.edu, indicated that René included this concept in a text called The Treatise of Man. In this whole thing, according to Stanford's article, René said that he would describe the body, then the soul, and how they interact, much like his failure to prove why God is self-evident and thought proved it. He did not go into the mind very much, or the soul very much. 
and didn't say anything about how the mind and body work together. Although Rene claimed he was going to do that in this treatise. Now this statement that I said from Stanford would rely upon the accuracy of the article itself, and I know from previous articles I've read versus the books I've actually read, showed that I should be skeptical of anything an article says about a book. So take that part from Stanford with a grain of salt. Big, big grain of salt. Especially yeah. when a lot of studies are paid for. Yeah. Or people are inherently biased. And they want to prove something. So they will inherently dismiss things or not even pay attention to things that contradict what they're saying in order to prove a narrative. Their narrative. Kind of like a dog with a bone. Look what I found. Look what I found. Yeah. You can be trying to grab the bone away from the dog, take your other hand and smack the dog upside the head without the dog noticing until you smack him. Yeah, that, that sounds like a dog. There is one note that I have on how interesting the primary book that we have been talking about is that Rene thought that blood comes from the lungs. Unless he spoke just in terms that the blood is coming back from the lungs to the heart. This is where the heart would expand because of the warmth of the blood coming from the lungs. Because of the warmth. Not because the heart was a muscle. And that the heart would contract because the blood would cool down inside the heart. Oh, that makes That's what he thought. And perfect that's, sense. That's prob- I imagine that's what a lot of people re- thought back in the day. Oh. He even talked about... Well, what? Oh, I was going to say because they thought the airflow would cool it off or something. Who knows? Okay, get back to it. Who knows? I don't know. They make stuff up. Even Rene said there's a lot of severe limitations in the medical field during his time. So I don't know why he just openly accepted the flow of blood being that. Probably just so he could finish his fucking book. Yeah, it seemed like a lot of circular thought. It was like reading... You know, have you ever seen those anatomy pages things where... You have one layer on a clear sheet and you take off one clear sheet and you have another layer. That's what like each part of this book was like. It was like same thing, different different angles, more depth, got a little deeper into the rabbit hole of nonsense. Just a little bit more. Yeah, a, little it, bit more. a lot of writers do this, especially philosophical ones. There was a book I read called On the Science of Consciousness. Do not recommend. One star review. It was, it was like that. It was like, I imagined what I was reading being like a downward spiral, like a corkscrew, into the same thing he said at the very beginning. I was like, why did I even read this book? All I had to do was read the first fucking chapter and I'm good. It probably just got worse and worse. Yeah. And more confusing. Yeah, and whenever I get that notion, when I start reading chapter after chapter where it starts doing the same thing, I just, my bias has me go, I'm not reading anymore. Yeah, I I, I lose interest. That's ridiculous. Nothing new here. You said it already in a different way, trying to confirm it. Seems like they weren't really secure on their own thought, and they just wanted to prove it more and more. And this is evident or implicit in how Rene Descartes would talk about how people may say this about me, people may think this about me, but this is really the real reason. And it was like, he, he focused too much on what people were thinking. Insecure. He was, yeah, he was worried about other people's thoughts. Instead of what he, yeah. This is, is that what it is? What? Like what he thought. Yeah, which is kind of funny. He talked about, he should focus on only his own thoughts. But yet here he is. Talking about other people's thoughts. What is it called in science? Isn't it called like your thesis? Or what is it called where you think you know what the outcome is? He called it the news. He called it a hypothesis. That, yes, that. Hypothesis or hypothesis. He didn't yes. even label it as a theory because he didn't even use any evidence. Oh, see, that's... Oh, so he even stupid. had a section. He even had a section where he said he's, there's going to be some things he says that he's not going to try to demonstrate because he's going to leave that up for future humans. And this is just... What he hypothesized, 
He even had parts like that, like, yeah. which I don't blame him. I don't know why. But I don't like the way he just used circular thought and then even included that logicians called some of the stuff that he would say would call would call some of the stuff he say a circular thought. Then he went on to explain that this is not circular thought. As a matter of fact, I am not going to try to say the cause explains the outcome. Rather, he would use the outcome to explain the cause. Yeah, that's what we're listening to earlier. Yeah. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, that in itself is silly shit because you can have a homeless person, right? He could, that homeless person could be homeless for a plethora of reasons or maybe just a couple and they may be different from other people because everybody has different stories but ended up in the same place. Yes. And the same thing goes with when a person has a different point of view than you on a certain topic of any kind. They could have came to that with different reasoning than what you might assume. So to say that the effect explains the cause. Yeah, like everybody becomes homeless because they do drugs. Every single person. Yeah. Yeah, right? It, or it's got to be mental illness. Well, that's another one. It couldn't possibly be because he had gotten hurt at his job. His wife just left him. Because he lost his job. That fucking whore. And then he has to go away. He has no family. He had to be homeless. There's people like that. That poor sack of shit. I mean, poor human. I, should, I could see... Oh, what? I should find his wife and destroy her. Probably ex. Oh, ex-wife. Yeah. Ooh. The one that thing, though, I'm not going to be completely dismissive of Rene Descartes, okay? Because I know a lot of people tout about him as this great person in philosophy, like Aristotle was touted about during Rene's time. But what I do say is that the effect does explain the cause in one way. That is the impact that the cause made. It explains the end result from that specific cause. But it does not tell you what the cause is. You have to do other tests. This is why in the medical field, when you have a symptoms, you could have a wide range of different causes for those symptoms. But you have to do blood work. You have to do scans. You have to do all sorts of things to figure out what the cause is. And even then, some of the doctors could read the blood work or whatever wrong. You have different doctors with different opinions. Um, that's it for this episode. Yay, Descartes. If Very you, interesting. Oh, sorry. If you like this podcast, I know you do because you're already here. Go back and listen to the previous episodes. I know the sound. Sound is an F quality, according to whoever cares about the white noise or the sound of their room. But what matters to me more than anything, and I hope you feel the same way, is the logic of what's being said or the, the narrative in order to understand what? The content. Yes. yes. The, the content's content important. It's what matters. Because if you didn't care about content, you could just go to your poop tube and watch some regular Joe show. Or YouTube poop. I like a, the tube of you poop. Sometimes. Only when the poop is exiting the hole. But quite literally, how many times have you you read a book? You said, God damn, that was bullshit, but it was number sell, number one seller. Remember those times or the time where you watched the TV show that was the biggest one going on. And you said, this laugh track is obviously fake. I'm not finding this funny. Yeah, it's full of shit. Yeah, it's bullshit. It's not lifelike at all. Yeah, this two and a half men is nonsense. It's Charlie magical. Sheen is obviously coked out of his mind. Life isn't magical. I mean, it is if you make it that way. Nah. I like what the Rosicrucians thought. Or was that the Satanists? How everything in science is magic until you find out the causes. Anyways, you guys, just rate. Follow us on all the social media. Give us a five. 
star review. Yeah, five star review. No actually less. leave an actual like verbal or you know some kind of shit you can read. Share. Yeah, share there you it. Get a free t-shirt. Help us expand. Yeah, then you need to message. You know, on yeah. one of the social media platforms and show your evidence of all of this fuckery that you did. And you become a part of the tribe. Yeah. And there's only going to be a hundred. Yeah. The first only a hundred t-shirts too. Yep. The of first this kind. That, you know, do all that. They like and follow on all the social media platforms. You get a free t-shirt and it's really fucking awesome. And eventually we'll have like gatherings of the tribe. And you can't get in without the shirt. Yeah. And I'm the nut gatherer. So, you know, you want to be like me and gather some nut. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we have the squirrel hunter, the nut gatherer. What else do we got? The rock pusher, the rock mulcher, right? No. None of those. Neither one. The cement mixer. There we go. No, that wasn't even it. Oh. Fuck me. We need to go back and make a list. Yeah, we need to go back and make a list. We have a list somewhere. We have a nut picker and a nut commander. Remember those? Yeah. We have the nut trapper. We have the nut driver. Um, We have the nut rubber, the nut taster. And then we have... We have... nut taster. Tom Nye. Tom Nye is the logger. Yes, he He likes to log. He does like to log. He loves logging that wood out of his... Yeah, he does. He loves the wood. All the time. It's his favorite. Yeah, it's his favorite time of the day. We got to give him a log like every single day so we can log. Yeah. Yeah, we can log. Yeah, we log him real good. We can log in his logs. (laughs) Yeah. We also have the wood splitter. We have the rock smasher. Then the two little teenagers, whether one is a rock, rock milker and the rock grinder. Yes. Oh, don't forget the old 70-year-old man. He is the medicine man. Yes. The no, man. witch doctor. That's oh, what he is. Yeah, witch, the doc. witch doctor. We That's, need to write this down. Yeah, we will. We'll do it later. Yeah. You can write it on my back. Yeah, I appreciate all of you guys. Yes, very much so. Every person who says the opposite of what am I canceled douchebag says. There's there's another guy. There's a new guy. He just hasn't liked and subscribed and all of that. Oh, he lives in Oregon, right? Yes, but his name is Texas. I bet you like the way I say your name, Texas. Texas? Yeah, his name is Texas. Texas? Yeah, like the state. I don't think Texas can fit inside Oregon, honey. Yeah, that'd be one bloody Oregon. Oregon? Orphis. <laughs> Orphis, Oregon. Yes. Anyways. That was uh, a good one, Floyd. That, that was, guy just needs hey, to do the stuff that we were got, talking about. You gotta get off that fucking phone and say that stuff more often, you asshole. Sorry. Fuck you. I know you're trying to get laid, but come on. All okay. right. God damn it. You got 6.75 other days to get laid. I know. More than that. Fuck. Yeah, you can even just fuck a cantaloupe. I'm not that desperate. Cantaloupe. It doesn't feel bad. You grab a melon baller, go. And you make a little hole, then you put it in a microwave for a little bit. It feels like the real thing. Jesus Christ. <laughs> like roast beef. Oh, Blue Waffle criticized yes, me. Yes, I was just going to say, Blue Waffle, really? God damn, you guys. Always talking about my pussy. Look at Tom Nye. He's asleep on a chair. Well, I mean, he's got to get oh, sleep sometimes. He's son of a bitch. Gork, you didn't have to mushroom slap him. Hey, he earned it while falling asleep during our sit-in. Okay. We invited him here and he ruined it by sleeping? That asshole. I don't think we really invited him here. We kind of just, you know, he's like kidnapped. And well, stuff. we invited him from the closet. Yeah. Well, and he knows if he doesn't do it, huh, you know. He'll face the consequence. Yeah. He'll be put in that hole again <laughs> in the desert. Yeah, it sounds like Tom is getting kind of feisty. Are doing though. something? Tom sounds kind of feisty, though. He likes to, uh, 
try to get inside the void hole. Yeah, now. we we gotta go write that list on my back, you yeah, guys. Yeah, we do. We gotta have actually like a big, huge poster. Okay. We eventually have of all the tribes member. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then we could give it to every single tribes member oh. in a little card, like a like an ID card, but without their actual picture and their title. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Plus, I mean, we have the shirts set up to where when we actually do have those little gatherings, there'll be a way to see if it's real or not. Okay. Okay. We leave in peace. We leave in peace. Bye. See you later.